That was a very generous donation, so I got no problem sitting here for eight minutes and listening to this with you. So, here we go, guys. From Powderfinger, this is, sorry for chewing peanut butter while I'm doing this. Uh, the name of the track, this is a live performance called These Days. Let's do this. All right. Thank you very much. We love you. Got to turn on my mic. I'm going to keep doing that and make that mistake. Aya, on ukulele. Anyhow, um, I hated to stop there, but I wanted to. I didn't want to get too far away from some of my thoughts. That sometimes it, gets, it happens if I get really into a track and stuff, and I go two minutes. And go, oh my god, I forgot to say what I wanted to say about the thing I needed to say about this. A couple of things. Um, first of all, live performances have such a uniquely different kind of energy. Uh, especially when I, I will never in my life ever get the opportunity to ever hear anybody hum any of the melodies I've written, the thousands of tracks that I've done for TV, let alone a song. What an amazing experience it must be when, you, when you're at a concert and people know your music and sing, you know, and sing it back to you. You know, it's, it's got to be such an incredible feeling knowing that you've impacted people and brought that kind of joy to their lives, you know, for that whatever that distraction of that song means to an individual. Okay, I'm done goobering over that. The opening guitar chords, I kind of had to glide into a little bit going, oh, okay, the same pattern, it's kind of purple rain kind of vibe, but I only use that as a point of description. Those chord patterns have been used, it's pop song chord patterns, you know. Um, once his vocals came in, this guy's got a great voice. I love his style of performance. I love his, uh, presence in performance in what I'm hearing. One of the things though I'm really kind of enamored with is the guitar arrangements that started to pop up from the other guitar player. And if I saw this right, listen to my voice, I'm really cracking, I feel like I should be in sixth grade right now going through puberty. <laughs> that there was one section where he started to play and it had kind of more of an acoustic, I mean a rhythmical effect with a wah kind of vibe. And I said, okay, that's really interesting. And creeping up in the back, it sounded like a little keyboard pad that was being held just very in the back, just to add a little bit of ambience. <clears throat> then 
uh, after the first hook, I believe, I can't remember. See, this is what happens if I listen to a song too long and not stop. Uh, that same guitar player shifts from that pattern into what I thought for a second was a keyboard player, but then because of the video, I could see it was the guitar player doing these 16th notes with a very unique effect on it. And I thought it was really super badass sounding. It sounded fantastic. To me, this is a great song, and this is, the, this is to the power of less is more. And there's a lot more space and beauty in the arrangements to allow the melody to really soar. You know, and to me, that's paramount. And then finally, I started hearing a little bit more of a bolder introduction of the keyboards, uh, where it sounded like it could be like, you know, a, a Hammond or something like that, or, or, or a, you know, um, maybe a Wurlitzer or something. No, no, Wurlitzer. What's the other organ I'm thinking about? Had a nice little, um, I can't think anymore, my brain frying. The older I get, the better I was. The Leslie uh, sounding kind of vibe to it. So some of the roots of this comes pulling in from uh, more traditional, I would say, late se or mid 70s kind of uh, folky kind of vibe. But uh, I went on too long. Let's hear it for him, guys. 
This was a great track. A track. I'll tell you one of the things that I really truly loved about this too. It had a little bit of Radiohead and a little bit of a jam band vibe to it. Now that la that ending could have gone on for a little for at least another minute. You know, because it had that, you just were in it. You're in it to win it. It's a different kind of performance when it's live, you know. And something else that I noticed that I really dug that helped create the sound as well um, is that uh, if, if you're a guitar player, you know anything about Telecasters, that both, both guitar players were using Telecasters, the electric guitar players on the side. And they, they, are, they are the workhorse of the metal world. And I'm not saying that, you know, nowadays with the Ibanez and the humbuckers and the bing bunkers and the boom bunkies and the, you know, the, the big fat boy, you know, pickups and stuff. Everybody has very unique tones, obviously. Humbucking, humbucker setup is totally different than single coil. I mean, even my guitar, look, my guitar is kind of a cheater. Um, I don't know if you can see it. My guitar is single coils, but I have uh, hot rod bars. So it gives me a little bit of a different punch. This is from Seymour Duncan's and stuff. So we all have different kind of setups. But um, if you have a Telecaster or know anything about the Telecaster, it is the absolute workhorse. And it can produce so many unique sounds in so many different ways. It doesn't rely too much on post or pedal work. You know, so that's, you know, something super, super sick. And, um, and I love the ending. It was just all sing song. You know, no more lighters up in the air, but whatever, they're holding their cell phone camera kind of vibe. And once again, I'm going to circle back in. It's got to be such an unbelievable feeling uh, to have, you know, you're in front of people and they're singing your song. You know, you can just see it on the musicians' faces. And uh, I don't know, maybe I should start spending more time doing my twice-baked sessions and listening to live performances because there's just something about that. Um, I mean, I can glow and glam on the most... Uh, you know, cleanest recorded album, you know, things. But some of my favorite listens have been to like, you know, Nightwish or bands that are doing live, you know, performances because you just never know what's going to happen. Or if they decide to stretch the end for another, you know, minute and a half and get very unique performances out of it. But this was a kick-ass suggestion. And uh, Ziff TV, thank you so much. And once again, I can't thank you enough for that amount. That was very nice of you. I'm going to buy a bag a very nice Costa Rican coffee because of that. So thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it.